All right, welcome to this episode of Trojan Poetry. We are on episode number 31, and this is actually a continuation of episode 30, and it will be continued in episode 32. We are doing three poets by the same author, uh, because that's interesting, right, to kind of get a sense of maybe their whole work, or maybe you can connect the works. Uh, so this one is called Eating Alone by Lee Young Lee. I've pulled the last of the year's young onions. The garden is bare now. The ground is cold, brown, and old. What is left of the day flames in the maples at the corner of my eye. I turn, a cardinal vanishes. By the cellar door, I wash the onions, then drink from the icy metal spigot. Once, years back, I walked beside my father among the windfall pears. I can't recall our words. We may have strolled in silence. But I still see him bend that way, left hand braced on knee, creaky, to lift and hold to my eye a rotten pear. In it, a hornet spun crazily, glazed in slow, glistening juice. It was my father I saw this morning waving to me from the trees. I almost called to him until I came close enough to see the shovel, leaning where I had left it in the flickering, deep green shade. White rice steaming, almost done. Sweet green peas fried in onions. Shrimp braised in sesame oil and garlic, and my own loneliness. What more could I, a young man, want? All right, I'm really uh, putting some heavy stuff here on this Chris is and Mike. This is an awesome <laughs> poem. I, I'm not, I'm still you know, a little ways away from making any kind of meaning out of it, yeah. but the imagery in this was mm-hmm. just fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like I was reading uh, like a series of, of haiku, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, just each one attacking one of the senses um, and, and then, you know, somehow, you know, wonderfully connected, um, the glazed and slow glistening juice. Mm-hmm. The sound of that, oh, right? Mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's just fantastic. Yeah, and uh, the, the sound of it as it comes off of the tongue, but also like it almost gives sound to something being glazed, right? Like right. you could hear that happening, right? Yeah. And, um, then flickering in the deep green shade. Um, and then this ending here, <clears throat> in my own loneliness, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what more could from? I, a young man, want? Like, I, you know, I have to go back and think it through, but I, I think there's something so beautiful about, at times, it is okay to want to be alone and like just mm. to, to do mm. that. And um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm curious what you guys thought. Mm-hmm. Well, do you want to go first? No, you, you have can to go first. Oh, th- <laughs> well, I mean, I can tell <laughs> you what I think, all right. but I don't well, want to go. step on All right, well, I'll go, I'll, I'm going to bounce off of what Chris just said. I thought the same thing. You know, onions, the, the images, onions, mm-hmm. then the trees, um, then the hornet, then he sees his father again, and then he's making dinner or having a meal by himself. So it's like he's he's progressing through you know, now, and then the middle two stanzas are flashback, and then back to now. And I don't know, I guess the onions are joined because at the beginning he's describing onions, and at the end, sweet green peas fried in onions, and that brings the memory of his father back to him, and walking through the trees like he used to with his dad brings it back to him. What I'm wondering about is, you know, John and I, we've talked about the turn in the middle of a poem, you know, when you read the middle of a poem, that's a lot of a lot of times that's when things change and the hornet seems to me, like you mentioned there, could be the change, but what is it? You know, yeah. a hornet spun crazily glazed in slow glistening juice. Is it himself? And that's how he feels now as he's by himself and he's trying to figure things out. Um, and for me, I, I mean, I, I totally can see where that um, could be the turning point. For me, the poem really turned and, and, and started to get confusing with, with the shovel. Um, oh yeah, the shovel. What, what, what was the shovel for? I mean, oh yeah, I um, guess he never really uses it, right? Well, I guess is where he, he had up used it. I, I don't know. Um, I think it's he thinks he's the shovel is there, and he kind of thinks it's his dad. Like there's just that perfect right, that, right. Oh, okay. It's like so, a, an illusion momentarily. I came close enough to see the shovel. Oh, mm-hmm. so he thought it. Yeah, he he thinks of his father when he sees that. Well, just because maybe the yeah. form. Yeah, like yeah. out of yeah. the corner of his eye, he's like, oh, okay. oh no, wait, that's a shovel. Right. Yeah. That's what how I read it. Interesting. Maybe. Yeah. I need to read that one again. Yeah. But I think if I can jump into yeah, the, the hornet, mm-hmm. or the, the, hor- yeah, the hornet thing, mm-hmm. um, because the poem is called Eating Alone, mm-hmm. right? And at the end of the poem, the author is indeed eating alone, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. the hornet is also eating alone, mm. right? The hornet mm-hmm. is the first character we actually see eating alone, and he's spun crazily glazed in slow glistening juice. Like, this hornet is really enjoying mm-hmm. the rotten pear. Yeah. <laughs> 
right? Yeah. I mean, just the sound, right? The Z sounds, the S sounds, the G sounds, that line yeah. is so, like you said, so beautiful and stands out that eating alone is a, is it can be a very pleasant thing, despite the fact that it is a rotten pear, mm -hmm. right? So even in the, in the midst of rot, right, you can still find happiness. Yep. So yep. when I got to the end, I was like, oh, okay, he's alone, but he's eating these sweet peas and mm -hmm. the onions and he's enjoying it despite being lonely, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So the, the hornet is kind of a symbol maybe for him. Mm -hmm. mm at the end but i wondered is the word want the double meaning of the word want there like in my loneliness what more could i a young man want because okay maybe yes he wants to be alone but then want like he's missing his father mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like what more can a young man miss than his father mm. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only thing on his mind right now. Right. And the fact that he gendered, like, a young man, right? Like, that was the part yeah. right. that stood out to me. And, and um, It's interesting, too, like, that the word young, though, is, is subjective, though, to right. something. Like, I mean, how young is he? I, I don't get the sense as the, you know, that he'd be cooking um, white right. rice steaming with sweet green peas and onions uh, and all that sort of stuff. He was too young of a man, right? right? And so right. there's this little bit of confusion there. I, I don't know. I, those last two sentences, I th they're just yeah. Yeah, it was stunning. Like hits you. That's, yeah. like, that's a good closer. And I think in the first poem that we read yeah. last in the last episode mm -hmm. where there seemed to be some ambiguity, right, where the father's disciplinary, fiery mm -hmm. hands, this one is just, I, I miss my dad. I miss him. Mm -hmm. Just adore right? it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just the, but the beauty of it, and again, that kind of confused, how can I be happy without him, you know, like, mm -hmm. how, can, how can I be happily eating Right, yeah. despite mm -hmm. the loss and the rot of it's interesting too when you connect it back to the other poem there's this this reoccurring um, th I guess theme perhaps, but that the memories of people we've lost don't necessarily contain the conversations that we had, oh, yeah. right? Because he's saying here, I can't recall our words. And in the other poem, he goes, I can't remember the tale, but his mm -hmm. voice, uh, but I hear his voice still, right? right? The same kind of thing. Um, and in this one, he says, we may have even rolled in silence. You know, I don't know. Uh, it didn't, didn't matter. Right. right. What so, matters is that together. Mm -hmm. that, and that, that physical presence of someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would say there's a gift in this poem in that the dad is the one who shows him the pear. And the dad mm -hmm. says, look at this pear with this hornet in it. Right. And the, the lesson seems to be, like I said, like even in the rot, right. you can find something to take spinning pleasure in. crazily. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, the father is kind of giving this life lesson right, right. in this kind of strange way. Yeah. And at the end, even in grief, you can still enjoy your meal. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I, as you, as you guys are talking, I reread the first stanza when it says, what is left of the day flames in the maples at the corner of my eye. So maybe that's the memory popping in. I turn a cardinal vanishes and a cardinal is red mm. and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you notice it. Maybe that's, you know, like his father, his father vanishes, like right. his father vanishes yeah, away with the shovel. Yeah. Right. That's a great poem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Right. So, yeah. uh, no real question, but do you think we're right? I mean, or do you, you know, does this strike a chord? It struck a chord with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and do, do, are you moved in the same way? So. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for watching. Please join the conversation in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at Trojan Poetry DGN. Also, check out our website at trojanpoetrydgn.blogspot.com. <laughs>